Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, if you're new, which is, do they write him and sing him like they used to? Now, a lot of people, no kidding, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I am not so sure. And today we're going to talk about that with uh, my 30 favorite albums of 2008. So this is the second part of a three-part series. So I hope you'll uh, hang on and watch this. Um, yeah, so we're counting down 20 to 11. So we're right in the middle of it. And yeah, love this. 2008 was a great year. I'm also working on 2009. And I got to tell you, 2009 is a weaker year than 2008. So yeah. Great stuff. So let me go ahead and pull up my spreadsheet. We'll try to make this uh, a little quicker than usual. But um, coming in at, uh, um, by the way, if you like what we're doing here, seeing you're reacting to the new music of the 21st century, because that's all we discuss here, is, uh, you know, hit that like or subscribe button. It, it, it really does help. So few of you guys do that, but makes a big difference. Um, show a little love. All right, coming at number 20 is one of my favorite artists, and I'm surprised he's this low. Uh, I do like the album quite a bit. It's Beck, Modern Guilt. Songs like the title track and Chemtrails, wonderful. Um, I would say the album is maybe just slightly uneven, so that's why I have it so low. But the best half of this album is killer. Beck is, uh, this is classic Beck. It's not... Um, you know, his, his ballads or his uh, emotional albums. This is one of his fun albums, and I really like it. I, I think it's quite underrated. It got okay reviews. Um, yeah, it's not considered the best in his Canaan, but I would give it a three and a half stars. Always love Beck. Never going to be tired of him. So there we go. Number... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops, I've I've got a mistake here. So let me fix this. Um, I only have nine albums on my list. Why do I only have nine? Oh, here we go. Okay. I only have nine albums on my list. So hang on. Hang on. So number 19. Number 19. We're going live here, folks. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. I got it. So number 19 is a Malian musician. Um, I had typed in, instead of 19, I had typed in 99. Oh, well. But anyway, uh, this is not a household name at all. This is Issa Baga Yogo. And uh, he passed away a few years ago. But And he only made, I think, four albums. But he plays, uh, I think he plays the, I think he plays the Kora. But what's so cool about him is, you know, a lot of people that do traditional Western Malian music, Mali being in uh, North Africa. Uh, it, it, it's usually traditional, but what he's done is he's mixed electronic beats and given it a little bit of rock and roll flavor. So I uh, really like this, and uh, I really uh, think you should check this out. It's called Mali Kura. Oh, that's the name of the instrument, K-O-U-R-A, the Kura. And he's a um, uh, very talented on that instrument. It's a stringed instrument. But like I say, he mixes it with electronic beats. And it's very modern. And you will I think you'll love it. Of course, everything's sung in a foreign language. And my understanding is it's not even a common language in Mali. He's singing in a very obscure, small uh, language. So, But it's uh, awesome. Uh, coming in at number 18. This isn't exactly an international album, but it's by the band Dengue Fever. And it's the album Venus on Earth. Now, who's Dengue Fever, you ask? 
So they are a Los Angeles band, but they got a little bit of a twist. They have a singer from Cambodia. So most of the songs are sung in Cambodian, some in English, and sometimes there's a second singer. Uh, really infectious, because what they do is they borrow from surf rock and spy movies and soundtracks and Cambodian psychedelia. What is Cambodian psychedelia, you ask? Well, during the Vietnam War, uh, Cambodia had its own thriving psychedelic rock scene. So they borrow from all those uh, styles and meld it into pop rock, and they're great. Uh, uh, songs like Sober Driver, and th th these are so catchy, and I found out about them. Uh, I don't remember how I found out about them, but I do... Um, subscribe to an international blog and the guy that writes that he's a huge dengue fever fan so yeah highly recommend these guys um and by the way i'm going to do a spotify a spotify playlist i do it all the time so that'll be in the link below and you can listen to these uh albums either the entire playlist which will be highlights about a third of each album or uh, you can just select um, songs or albums and go through there. So, yeah, check the link below. Number 17, um, believe it or not, it's dubstep. Yeah, yeah, I do like some dubstep. You guys know I like burial. This is Arabenga Arahumo. That's his full name, but he goes by the name Benga. And although he's of Nigerian descent, uh, which would be West Africa. He was born in London, and he's a electronic uh, DJ and musician. And this is called Diary of an Afro Warrior. This is killer stuff. This is the kind of dubstep I really like. Really cool. You, you need to check it out. I highly recommend it. And he was one of the uh, pioneers of dubstep music. And whereas um, Burial is kind of ambient, he's more bass heavy and club more more club style and it's really cool diary diary of an afro warrior those uh last three albums uh isabaga yogo dengue fever and benga none of those are rated by metacritic or um uh, pitchfork but the isabaga yogo and dengue fever get four stars on all music and Dengue Fever gets four and a half stars. So, um, no, I'm sorry. The Benga gets four and a half stars. Man, I'm. it's a little bit late at night, but you're following me. So uh, the Beck is four stars, four stars, four stars, and then four and a half for Benga. So awesome stuff. All right, coming at number 16, a band I've seen four times in concert that i'm a big fan of and this one gets a little bit of it gets a little underrated because bill barry's not in the group any longer this is rem accelerate their second to the last album and it's hard rocking and the lyrics i gotta tell you the lyrics on this album are so cool where's my cartoon trap door i don't know if you remember the cartoons when the but there's just so many uh cool cool lyrics by michael stipe and then i'm a i'm just so impressed with every uh, album uh mike mills so most people think of uh peter buck and michael stipe but mike mills plays the bass and his singing is just great on here and uh so many great tracks i just played this again the other night I, I, and I think they could do a lot worse. So this album, what's the ratings on it? Well, four stars, all music, 79 on Metacritic, 6.7 Pitchfork. They're a little tough on it. Uh, but, you know, I, I think what people do is they compare albums to earlier catalog. And if you're going to compare this to Reckoning or Murmur or Fables of the Reconstruction, 
that's not fair. Just listen to the album, stand alone, pretend it's a debut album, and you'd be like, hey, who is this? Because the playing's great, the lyrics are great, the singing is great. So, um, and I pretty much agree with these ratings. Uh, they're all in the four to four and a half star rating, and that's where I'm at. All right, number 15 is going to be a bit of a surprise, a bit of a surprise. You guys might not know how much I really like this album, but I, my favorite album by Adele is her debut. I like 19, and most people like 21 or 25 best, but I love this one. First time I heard Chasing Pavements back in 2008. It's fantastic. Uh, I love that song. I was going around telling my friends about it, and they were like, uh, okay, okay, Gene. Then later, I'm like, hey, remember when I told you about Adele? No, nope, I don't. <laughs> I don't remember. But I was hip to her right away. And to me, each album has had diminishing returns, the exception being the song Rolling in the Deep. That's that's a great song. But on this one, you have um, Hometown Glory and the uh, opening track. What is... Uh, but anyway, the uh, I, I've just spaced out the name of the opening track, but the instrumentation is so spare on here. Like the very first song just opens with acoustic guitar and bass. And then the second song is just bass, just acoustic bass. Everything is so spare and I love it. And I think her albums would become more and more produced over the years and uh, yeah, she'd get in with these big name producers and yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of like this stripped down sound. So Adele, um, she's fantastic. Great voice and interesting lyricist. I think she's underrated as a lyricist. So yeah, Adele 19, her debut album. Huh? I think it's great. Um, all right. Coming in number 14 is the lowest rated album that I might have on this whole list. Nobody seems to like this album except me. Um, this is My Morning Jacket, Evil Urges. So it gets four stars on all music, but only 67 on Metacritic and 4.7 by Pitchfork. I just think these folks are wrong. Um, I've seen My Morning Jacket in concert and also have listened to a bootleg of theirs. And these songs like Touch Me, I Think I'm Going to Scream, and Highly Suspicious, and I'm Amazed, these are concert staples. I, I love this album. Highly Suspicious is so much fun. It's silly, but it's fun. And I think the band's in great form. Evil Urges is a wonderful album. I I bought it. I listened to it. I I had never read the reviews, so I didn't know people didn't like it. Do you know what I mean? I didn't. In 2008, we had the internet, but it wasn't like today where you just had instant access to everything. Um, so I just, I don't know. I loved it without knowing that other people didn't. Uh, on Rate Your Music, it's album number, I think, 1001. Ugh. Yeah, no love there. So, all right, coming in number 13 is an album that people do agree is a good album. This is the Drive By Truckers, another band I've had the great pleasure to see at a little club. This is Brighter Than Creations Dark, four and a half stars on all music, 83 Metacritic, 8.2 on Pitchfork, 130 on Rate Your Music. And Everyone seems to agree this is a great album, and I agree. Of course, I like every Drive-By Truckers album. My favorite is Southern Opera, but this is a really strong contender. So you have just some, you have some awesome songs, but this is the first album after uh, Jason Isbell left. So Shauna Tucker, she writes three of the songs on here and sings. She might sing all three as well. I think the album might be um, dismissed a little bit for that uh, because Jason Isbell is so, so good and so popular, but I think she's fine. And then 
the session musician Spooner Oldham. He plays keyboards on this album. It's terrific. Um, yeah, I always love Joy by Truckers. That three guitar attack uh, based on Leonard Skinner, but with uh, literate lyrics, Patterson Hood is well read and yeah, great. All right, number 12. This is an album I think that you guys all love, universally acclaimed, The Fleet Floxes, Fleet Floxes, Fleet Foxes debut. Um, what can you say about this album? Five stars on all music, 87 Metacritic, nine by Pitchfork. Yeah, number 18 on Rate Your Music. Universally acclaimed, I agree. I do have a slight preference for the sophomore album. But this one's really good. My favorite songs are White Winter, White Winter Hymnal and Tiger Peasant Song. Uh, I think if everything were as strong as those two songs, it'd be in my top five. Uh, but, but yeah, number 12, that's no slouch. So we're uh, loving Fleet Foxes. And coming in at number 11, wrapping this up, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Dig Lazarus, Dig, another universally acclaimed album, four and a half on all music, 87 Metacritic, 8.4 Pitchfork. Um, this is great, and this album did take me a little while to warm up to. It wasn't my favorite Nick Cave album, but now, you know, uh, these songs are, let me... Let me pull this up real quick because I want to. I want to get this um, these song titles. I want to talk about these before we wrap 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 this up. Um, I I like um, we call upon the author. That is one of my favorite songs. Um, who's the author? The author is you know who, and the author's got some explaining to do. <laughs> it's great. I also like um, more news from nowhere, which I did a a um, Master Monday on that one. So re re really good. I think when I first heard this album, the opening track, "Dig Lazarus Dig," uh, which is the most streamed song from here on um, Spotify. Um, it might not be my favorite song, so I'm not sure that I get that excited by the way the album opens. But pretty soon you get into these other songs like um, Jesus of the Moon and just some really wonderful things. So Nick Cave is one of the best artists out there. He's, uh, in terms of legacy artists, still making music in the 21st century. He's, he's strong. He's still making great albums. So love this one. And that's it. I'm trying to make the video a little shorter this time around. So we'll wrap it up. Let me know what you think and stay tuned for the top 10. What's it going to be? All right. So as we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia.